Karen Conrad serves as Director of Marketing for Andrew Womack Ministries. She is a teacher, an author, and maintains a successful real estate and home staging business that has been featured on the Lifetime Television Network. Welcome to Living with Karen Conrad. Thank you for joining me with Living with Karen Conrad. I am so excited. We are going to start a new series today called Only Believe. And there's a little bit of a history and a story behind this teaching. And I actually uh, brought this worn out sheet here because in 2001, this was something that the Lord spoke to me. And he actually started speaking about only believe. And so he gave me a teaching right here in this tattered piece of paper uh, that I studied out. And I feel like this is a foundation for us. Everything that we do as Christians is based on belief in the Bible. There is a responsibility for us to know the Bible uh, and to receive it and actually accept it as truth. And you know as well as I do, in this world, we have so many things that we experience, um, even our thoughts, the things happening in the world that do not seem to line up with the Word of God. And while sometimes that can be discouraging, or we might even wonder what is going on, I've had conversations like that a lot, uh, but the Word tells us, God tells us to only believe. And it is despite circumstances that we choose to believe the word over what we're feeling, over what we're hearing, over what we're experiencing. And in that is the abundant life. So I want to start out with a scripture. We are coming uh, close to the holidays and it's one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. And of course it has to do with Mary and I'm going to start reading here in Luke, and we'll start on uh, chapter 1, verse 28. And it says, And having come in, the angel said to her, speaking to Mary, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Wow, wouldn't that be amazing to hear an angel and to see an angel speak to you at that level? But as we go through these verses, I want to show you and encourage you that all along the way, Mary had a choice. She could have reasoned away this. She really discerned that this was absolutely from the Lord. And she chose to believe the words that she was hearing. So the first one was she was highly favored. Amen. Do you know that because of what Jesus did, you and I are highly favored? We can receive this for ourselves right here. Okay, then it goes on to say in verse 29, But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered which manner of greeting this was. I imagine that there was some fear that was trying to come in. That would be a little scary to have an angel appear before you. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Do you notice he started out saying, Do not be afraid. He saw that she was fearful. Maybe she didn't know what was going on. And immediately he spoke peace to her. Then went on to say, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. Wow. Again, imagine these things being spoken to Mary. She was a virgin. Not only was she told that she was going to conceive a son, but that he would be Jesus the highest and give him the, the throne of his father, David. Goes on to say, Amid, uh, or, and he will reign over the house of Jacob, however, in his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? That's a good question, isn't it? <laughs> I'd probably want to know the answer to that one too. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you 
and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for who, her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. So Mary heard something that seemed absolutely impossible in the natural. And he went on to confirm for her that Elizabeth, who was barren, was pregnant with a, a son. And he encouraged her, saying that with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So as we go through this scripture and we put ourselves in Mary's shoes, the Lord encouraged her through an angel. She had to receive what was said. He encouraged her that nothing would be impossible, though it seemed impossible in the natural. And then she responded by saying, I receive your word. Wow, that's amazing. What things has God spoken to you that you've had the opportunity to say, Lord, I receive that. Let it be according to your word. Or have there been things that the Lord has spoke to us that just seemed to be impossible in the natural and we just could not agree with him? I believe this teaching is going to help you. As we go through life, everything we face, God gives us a choice. Do you know his word covers every circumstance. Maybe it's not in the word in detail with what we go through, but in general, everything that we face, we truly have a choice to either go with what God says and only believe or to choose our circumstances. And as we unpack the scriptures and the word on this topic, you are going to see it will confirm for you that so much of what we experience in life has to do with what we believe when we see things coming at us in this world. So there's several points that I have in here. There's five of them actually, and we're going to be going through them. So if we look at only believe, first of all, it is a choice. We can believe the word or we can believe the world. And I'll explain more about that and define what I mean by those, uh, the word and the world. The second one is believe the word and you will have the word in your life. So many times I look at things and I want an outcome that lines up with the word, but I may be experiencing something that is opposite of that. I actually have a recent example with that. I've just, uh, the last couple days, I've just, um, I've just felt like, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm trying to work through situations and uh, maybe the people are not responding to me that I would hope. Or maybe I feel like um, people aren't pleased with me or they're frustrated with me. I mean, we're not perfect, but it really does kind of bother me when I feel like I'm, I'm not doing things that people agree with or, uh, or that they, they want me to do. And so as I was talking to the Lord about this, and I was just kind of discouraged, I kind of had a rough day, and he just reminded me, um, Karen, what does my word say about this? And I was like, wow, do you know what? I was so caught up in my thoughts and my discouragement and kind of feeling sorry for myself. I didn't even take a moment to consider what God's word says. And you know, his word says that I have favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. So I received that correction immediately because I had been dwelling on things where I didn't have good understanding from people. I didn't feel like I had favor, but that was lining up with circumstances in the world and it was not lining up with God's word. So I kind of had the understanding that, wow, do you know what? What I'm experiencing right now is probably because I've been agreeing with the enemy and not agreeing with God. So I'm going to change this right now. Start speaking out of my mouth. God, I thank you that I do have favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Amen? And you have favor too. 
All right, number three, believe the world and that's your result. And you could use the example I, I just shared with you, or um, you know, if we're experiencing lack, maybe there's something that business isn't coming our way and we know that God has asked us or told us to start a business. We can start to get discouraged. We can look at our bank account and it doesn't mean that you deny the reality of what's happening, but you deny its ability to have an effect in your life. And there's a choice in the midst of that that we have to make. I could look at my bank account and I could get extremely discouraged or I can start to look in the word and I can find scriptures that speaks to the truth about my finances and my prosperity. Amen. So number four is you choose. You have the power to choose your outcome. You know, a lot of times, I actually would be more comfortable blaming others for my outcome or blaming God or blaming the enemy for things that don't turn out the way that I want them to. But what this says is I choose, I choose life or death. I have the power to choose my outcome. And of course, there's good decisions that come in with that. There's, um, there's things that we need to learn along the way. But at the core of everything is God tells us to make a choice for his word. And number five, God has expressed his will and he has given us tools to walk it out. Do you know the word is filled with practical examples of how we handle things that come our way. For example, if we are talking about our finances, God tells us to give and it will be given unto you. Do you know, he's not going to force me to give, but he has given me the tools of sowing and reaping to apply in my life. Do you know, my son is starting a new business and uh, he's just really, um, he's really hustling with it and he's doing all the right things to build the business. But there are days that maybe he's not getting calls back or maybe the business isn't coming his way as quickly as possible. And I was able to encourage him and share with him based on my experience, I know right now, Levi, you're not seeing this, but you are planting seeds. Every time you stop by and talk to somebody about this, every time you learn more about tree care, you are planting seeds. And the word tells us we will receive a harvest. And so we have to be faithful. We get discouraged sometimes, but you know what? We don't quit. So if you are in a situation today where you're discouraged, circumstances aren't lining up, I wanna tell you to watch this series, be encouraged and don't quit. God has an amazing plan for you. And we're gonna go through some practical ways that you are going to be able to overcome some of the negative circumstances you might be experiencing. And we are going to help turn those around through the word of God. All right, so when we look at that first point and it says it's a choice, believe the word or believe the world. I told you I was gonna share a little bit more about the definitions of those. And so this is kind of how I, I saw it. It's a, you know, you might have another idea with this, but this is kind of how I'm looking at those two categories. So when God tells us to believe his word, okay, what is the word? There are three things. Obviously, the Bible is the Word of God. Uh, not part of the Bible, not portions of the Bible. The Bible in its entirety is the Word of God. Next, it says the Word tells us that Jesus Christ is the Word. And there is God's rhema word, which is spoken and impressed to us by the Holy Spirit. That's what Mary received. She had a visitation. She had a rhema word through the angel about her life. Now, one thing to remember is the rhema word will always line up with the word of God. So we don't need to be um, concerned about if we are missing God or, oh my goodness, was that God? We can measure it by the word. It will always line up with the Bible. And when we talk about the world, again, you have a choice. Do we want to have the word in our life or do we want to experience the world? Here are three ways that uh, I just, in my study, feel like we could define the world. 
obviously the world is a godless secular society and just watching the news sometimes I, I feel like i need to keep up with the current events but honestly it's never encouraging we really are experiencing a push of a godless secular society and even when you look at media you look at movies um, newspaper even curriculum in schools and education there is an influence that is trying to exalt uh, the world, the godless, secular things of this society over the word. Do you know it's happening all the time? And you say, what are some examples? Well, if I am in school and my uh, child is attending a public school, most likely they are going to hear that there is no God. Okay, that God does not exist. As a matter of fact, we're pulling the Pledge of Allegiance. We can't pray in school. And so they're being taught that to bring God into things public or to bring God into our society is wrong. Okay, that is pushing the world on our children. And our job as parents are we need to instill the word in our children so that when they are measuring what they're hearing from the world, they have an indicator through the word that says, I see what the world is saying, but this is what the word of God says, and I'm going to choose to exalt the word over the world. A next example of um, the world is a current age, the in thing. When you look back um, over the years, there is always trends. There's always something that is in. But oftentimes those things that are in, or we used to call it cool, I don't know what they call it today, <laughs> but that generally wars against the word. And so again, as children, um, I'm just thinking about children today, I guess, but as children want to fit in, we all have a desire to be liked or to fit in. Um, they, they would be focusing on things that would um, look like it would help them to fit in. Do you know, my dad shared an example with me that I thought was just um, astounding, actually. He had gone into a, a bookstore, and there was a coffee shop in that bookstore in a, a college town in Minnesota. And he said there was two tables of girls. There was one that had um, high school girls that were from another country. He could tell that they were from Asia and other parts of the country. And then there was uh, a table of high school or college age girls that were obviously from, uh, you know, Minnesota or the United States. And as he looked at what they were reading, the girls from America were reading um, magazines, you know, like fashion magazines, um, you know, things that that would show glamour and sort of showing them the in thing. And they were just consuming themselves with those magazines. And then he looked over at the table with the girls that were from the foreign country, and they were reading books that were educating them. And in that moment, he just saw like, my goodness, look at this difference. Our society is teaching girls to um, have an identity with fashion magazines. And, and really the articles in there are, are useless. And oftentimes they're actually speaking completely against the word of God. While the girls that came over here to study from other countries came over with an understanding that they needed to learn about math, about science, okay? The things that would help potentially improve uh, their lives and society. That is a great example of exalting, in some cases, those, the girls from the United States, the world over the word, the in thing, trying to be cool, focused on fashion, those types of things. The third circumstance here that I want to share with you that would define the world is actually those circumstances that line up with the senses contradicting the word. So when we think about that sight, what are we seeing that does not line up with the word of God? Um, so maybe it's something physical. So maybe we are looking at something in our physical body that is not lining up with the word. Do you know, several years ago, uh, I had, uh, after my husband passed away, um, 
I had a, a lump in, in my breast that I had found. And I was, I was at a point where I, I didn't, because I had just gone through something that was very traumatic for me, I wasn't in a position where I was the strongest um, emotionally to be able in, in, in my faith. It, it, it kind of rocked my world for a little bit. I wasn't able to immediately make that choice to only believe what the word says about my body. You know, by the stripes that wounded Jesus, I am healed and made whole. But I was just at a point in my life that I wasn't doing a great job just receiving that. And so I had gone down to a meeting uh, with a minister and uh, I drove down to Iowa. It was about a five hour drive, me and a couple friends. And I knew that I needed to um, get into that service and I wanted to be prayed for. And I had the desires like, Lord, I know this is not lining up with your word, but I was overcome with the circumstances that, that I was seeing, that I was feeling. And uh, I knew I needed to do something about that to help me get into a position to receive the word and exalt the word over what I was sensing and feeling and seeing. So I got down, down there and I went to be prayed for and the uh, minister was amazing and he just looked at me and he said, you know, what, what's going on? And I said, well, you know, I was crying, I've got a lump in my breast and um, I was just emotionally kind of a mess with it and, and obviously not at a place that I needed to be. And you know, he just looked at me and he said, what lump? there's no lump. And I'm like, well, yes, there is, uh, unless it's gone now. I was so in the senses that even when he spoke to me at that moment and he said, what lump? I wasn't getting it, but he continued to minister to me and the Holy Spirit made a transition in me. And he showed me like, look, you can believe the word or you can believe your senses and what you're feeling. And in that moment, I was able to receive the word. And I knew that that, that minister was speaking to me from the position of the word instead of my senses and circumstances. So when I could bring myself to receive it, and go, that's right, I'm going to change positions. So I sort of went from that seat of really looking at what was happening in the natural world, and I shifted and went over to the seat next to Christ. And I saw things from his perspective. And in that moment, I chose to agree with what God said about me, what God was seeing, and you know, that's truth. We have to continually exalt truth over circumstances. So uh, I left that and you know, in the natural, nothing had changed, but I truly chose to believe the word. I didn't even check that situation over the next several weeks because I had received the truth and I had decided that the word was more true than my circumstances. And you know, I think it was about two to three months later, I thought about it and I'm like, oh my goodness, uh, you know, maybe I better check this thing, right? Completely gone. And that was not through some, um, you know, miracle thing that I went through. I didn't have an overwhelming uh, laying out in the spirit type thing with healing. Although when he did lay hands on me, I, I definitely received that. But it was really something that was on the inside choosing to line up with the word. Do you know, we can do that every day. And that has been a lesson for me. And it may not be about something in my physical body. It may be something in my business, like I talked about. It may be something in my relationships. It may be something where fear is trying to overcome me. It may be something where ha something's happened to a family member that doesn't line up with the word of God. In every situation, we need to capture those thoughts, capture those things that we're facing, and really make a conscious decision to agree with what God says. All right, so 
Um, when we look at search, uh, situations and circumstances, one of the things that we need to understand is that for faith, we really need to have a knowledge of the Bible. Everything is based on the Word. We need to have a foundation on the Word. And with that, it helps us to determine the source of things. So when uh, negative things happen in the world or to us or friends or whatever that people are going through, if we don't have a knowledge of the Word, we can't properly discern what is God and what are the things that we need to truly stand against or uh, choose the word over. So John 10.10 10 says this, this is the New King James Version. It says the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Now, we've read this scripture, you probably have two hundreds of times, and it's easy to sort of just skip over. But when you're in the heat of the battle, when you're in a situation and you're wondering what is happening, this word, this verse is a foundation. First of all, you can properly discern where it's coming from. So again, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So the situation that you're facing, is it trying to steal something from you? Maybe it's trying to steal your joy. Is it trying to kill you? Okay, is it trying to uh, put a disease on your body? Okay, if those are the situations we can know right there. All right, this is something that I need to focus myself on the word because this is from the enemy. Or is it trying to destroy something in your life? Is it trying to destroy a relationship? Is it trying to destroy um, something in uh, your business or in your work? If it is stealing, killing, or trying to destroy right there, we can say that is not from God. That is from the enemy. And I'm going to choose what I know the word says over that. And that is where you start to see that turn in your situation and in your outcome. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Isn't that beautiful? So God is all about, Jesus came so that you and I can have life. We can have a good life and that we can have it in abundance. Wow, that is just powerful. I know it's really simple, but it's encouraging right there that we are not powerless. We are powerful because we have the power, Jesus Christ, in us that changes circumstances. It has to start on the inside. And as we make that change on the inside, it begins to flow out of us and it begins to change the outcome and the circumstances on the outside. So we will continue tomorrow uh, with Only Believe. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me for our series, Only Believe. I pray that it has been a blessing and an encouragement for you. If you would like to order the product Only Believe in CD or DVD, go to my website, karenconrad.net and click on products and it'll be available there for you. Also, if you would like to subscribe to my email list, go ahead and do that on my website and you'll receive updates and information that will encourage you in your walk with God. And finally, if you would like to partner with this ministry, it would be a huge blessing for me. So go to karenconrad.net and you can give financially to support this ministry. Thank you again and God bless you.